What's going on, engineers? So for the next month or so from the time this video is recorded, we're gonna be looking a lot at the front end part of web development. This is an area that we haven't explored all that much on this channel, so this should make for some really good content for a lot of people. And because HTML and CSS is the bedrock by which all modern sites are built on, it makes sense that we should start there. So we'll start by talking a little bit about HTML and CSS, and then we're gonna look at some examples of HTML and CSS so you can kind of see how these two things fit into the big picture on the front end for the web. So HTML stands for a hypertext markup language, and it's important to make the distinction between a markup language and a normal language. HTML is designed to render things to your browser, and HTML has no ability to do any kind of logic, like you won't see things like ifs or loops in HTML. And the way HTML works is when you go to a site, when you type in URL and you click enter, the browser will make a request to a server. That server will send back HTML to the browser and the browser will then read it and then render what that HTML means into the browser. And in the end, all the user sees is the final rendering of that HTML. So once there's plain old HTML on the screen, that's where CSS comes in. And CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. What CSS allows you to do is add style to your HTML. And when I say style, I'm referring to things like text color, background color, background images, padding, margin, border, and tons of other things. To use an analogy, if HTML and CSS were a house, HTML would be the brick and the wood, CSS would be the paint and the wallpaper. Now it's worth mentioning that CSS is optional. The browser is happy to render a page that's just in plain old HTML with no styles at all. The only problem is the site's gonna be really, really ugly. So now that we know what HTML and CSS is and does, let's look at some examples. So what you're looking at here is a very basic HTML document. And an HTML document is made up of a bunch of tags. And each tag is going to have an open tag and a closing tag. Opening tags are going to be the tag name inside of angle brackets, and then closing tag is going to be the same as the opening tag, except a slash in front of the tag name. So essentially everything's broken up into blocks. So from the HTML start tag to the HTML end tag is considered a block. And within the HTML block, we have two additional blocks. We have a head block and a body block. And each of these have their own respective start tag and end tag. And the three tags you see here, HTML, head, and body, are the minimum that every site will have. So basically, this is an HTML document which just shows a plain white background that you can see on the left-hand side here. The two tags within the HTML tag have very distinct purposes. The head tag is designed for header information, things like page title, or meta tags, or styles, and script tags. And these are all tags that are not intended to actually render anything to the screen. All of that would go into the body tag. So if I wanted to get something to show up in the browser, I could click into the middle of the body tag and I could type something like, hello world, save it, and you see that it shows up here. Now, as you can see, I've done nothing related to style. This is just a plain old HTML document that's a white background with some black text. Now, the way CSS fits into the equation is we're gonna utilize an HTML attribute called style. And the way HTML attributes are used are right after the starting tag, you can put a space and then you can type the attribute name. So in our case, we're gonna do style. You can put an equal sign and then double quotes. Now, whatever I type into the style attribute of the body tag is going to be read as CSS and applied to the body tag and all of its children. And the information that would go into the style attribute is going to be CSS properties and then the values for those properties. And the way you use CSS properties is by typing the property name, a colon, the property value, and then a semicolon. So the first property we're gonna use is to make this background a little darker so it stops burning my retinas. So we're gonna use the CSS property called background. So we'll simply type background, we'll type a colon, and then here is going to expect a hex version of a color we want to use. So if we want a really dark gray, we can do pound sign, two, 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 semicolon. And then when I save it, you can see the background goes dark. But now we have another problem. We have dark text on a dark background. So now we're just gonna add another CSS property to make the text white. So the CSS property to make the text white is called color. And then we do colon, and we'll do pound sign FFF, which is going to be white, a semicolon, save, and now the text is white. Now recall that CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And all we've looked at right now is just the CSS properties. Now, although the browser is perfectly happy to read these styles and apply them, even though they're directly in the tag, there's a better and cleaner way to do it, and it's with a style sheet. 
So instead what we'll do is we will organize all of our styles into a single file and then we'll apply those styles conditionally to the HTML document. Now CSS allows us to address our HTML tags in a variety of ways, but the most common is with something called a class. And a class can be thought of as a collection of CSS properties that can be applied to one or more tags by referencing the class name. So in this case, we're going to create a new class called dark. And to create a new class, we type a period, we type the class name, and then curly braces. And then inside here, we're going to put the properties that are contained within this class. So the property is just going to be the exact things we used here. So all we're going to do is just copy and paste these into here and set them like that. What I can do now is instead of using the style attribute, I can use a different HTML attribute called class. And it's still the same way, class equals quotes. And then here I can simply just state the class I want to use, so I'll put dark. And then when I save it, the page goes back to white. And the reason this happened is because we haven't actually included our style sheet into our HTML document. So to include our style sheet, which is called main.css, we're going to type something specific in the head tag. We're going to use a new tag called link. We're going to use an attribute called href, and the href is going to be the name of our style sheet, so main.css. And now we're going to do rel equals style sheet, so it knows that it's in fact a style sheet. Now once I click save, you can see that it goes back to the styles that we had before. The main benefit about using a style sheet is that any class you define in your style sheet, you can use it as many times as you want all over your HTML document. And if that style happens to change, you can simply add a new property in the style sheet and then it'll change it everywhere in the document. As far as the core concepts of HTML and CSS goes, this is pretty much it. This is how the two would interact. Hopefully this served as a good introduction. In future videos, we'll definitely be going in-depth on HTML and in-depth on CSS to make sure you understand everything about it. Depending on when you're watching this, those videos may already be available. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please make sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.